Let me just share a few things that may be in everyone's mind, but we need to discuss them collectively and find answers to them in the light of the Qur'an and the Sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. At the period of history that we are living in, in this era, it looks like each and every person has a worry. And the worry is about the situation of the world. What's happening in the world. And with everything, the final decision and conclusion, every person would come up with that there is need for a change. Some change has to come in this world. A change that will bring some peace of mind in the world. A type of change that will make human beings love human beings rather than dislike human beings. And then a lot of thoughts go to, through every person's mind that a change has to come and why do we need that change for? But hardly we come to realization that normally the solution we are thinking about bringing the change in the world never works. The amazing part is that there are conferences held about this topic. There are people that are working very hard to find some solutions to these problems. And generally you would find that the solution is they always try to start from up and coming downward. They don't want to start from the scratch from bottom and go upward. And of course, the natural result of that is a failure. That's the least if it's not a harm in return. Normally, if we would even start thinking about the change, the first thing that comes to mind, what can I and you do about it? We can only pray. The governments have to do something about it. Big organizations, they can do something about this. But we have no say. No one would hear us. Even if we say it, no one would know it. You can write an article, no one would read it. So what can I do? And at the end, you see the person is just giving it up. There is nothing that I can do about it. Without going into details, just a quick look. And I'm sure everyone would be able to figure it out within seconds now. A quick look at the history of the world. When Anbiya alayhimu salatu wasalam came to the world, what was the situation before the coming of the Prophet of Allah? And how the situation changed after the Prophet of Allah came? Did this Prophet of Allah depend on governments to change the situation and the position? Did they depend on organizations? No, never in the history. They worked on individuals. And they realized that human beings, if human beings will change, if individuals will change, the change will come in the whole world. The change will not come from outside. We have to make and remember this rule. The change will not come from outside. The change has to come from within. It has to come from within us. We cannot ask someone else to come and change this world for us. And if some outside force cannot come and change the world, same way, other people cannot come and change us. And therefore, a lot of times, people come with the conclusion that we cannot change people, so let's just destroy people. But of course, that's even a worse conclusion. And as I said, that most of the time it's a failure and if it is not, harm in return. And we see that how the harm will come in return. Anbiya alayhimu salatu wassalam always worked on individuals. Stand with yourself. Correct yourself. If there are four people in a family, and one person in this family starts working on himself and he's corrected, 25% of all families are being corrected. 
Two people in the family of four has been corrected. 50% of each and every family has been corrected. But as we wait for the world to change before I would change, where is that world? What are we expecting to change? The change has to come from within us. If we change, the world will change. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came, we know that the period before Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is known as the time of jahiliyyah, the days of ignorance. And the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Sahaba ridwanullahi alayhi wa that you may call it the golden era, the best time history have witnessed in the world. What did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam change in the world? The geographical design of the world? The boundaries of the countries? Or establishing beautiful buildings and gardens? No, he just changed those people. He changed these people 13 years in Makkah Mukarramah. Ibadahs are not being established yet in Islam. The five daily prayers is not for Fasting of Ramadan was not fard. Hajj is not there. Jihad is not there. There are no rulings. What is he working on for 13 years? Changing people. That every person needs to realize that he has to change. And if he would change, the world will change. And we see how Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam very successfully proved that as few people changed. And today we see the whole world is changed. Iman everywhere, alhamdulillah. Travel through any corner of the world and you would find someone to say, La ilaha illallah. Where did that change come from? Which media did he use? Which technology did he use? This was the secret of all the, of the work behind all the Anbiya alayhim salatu was salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us very clearly in Quran, إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم حتى يغير ما بأنفسهم. Allah will not change the situation of any nation until they are ready to change themselves. If they are not ready to change themselves, the change will not. We expect the whole world to change; it will not change. إن الله لا يغير ما بقوم. Allah will not change the situation of any nation until they change themselves. But where the change is going to come from? We need to understand that if me and you will go out of this place today after spending a whole month, alhamdulillah, with our attachment to the masajid and with the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and now we go back with the same idea that okay, now I'm back to my normal life. Month of Ramadan was a little hectic. I had to change my schedules. Now, I'm going to go back to my normal life. The same daily schedules. I cannot make any more changes to it. I have gone through a lot during these 30 days. Now I have to go back to that normal schedule. And then we fall back into the same normal things. And day by day, the situation is the same. Our tomorrow is not better than, better than today. This year is not better than last year. And if we start, if we, and we continue doing the same way, where this change is going to come from in the world? If me and you have no time to look at our schedules, to change our schedules, to change our situations, then where this change is going to come from in the world? I have no time for it, you have no time for it. I have to go to my work, you have to go to your work. And we'll see you next Ramadan. Then it's only hopes that the world will change towards the betterment. If there is no betterment in the people who are following the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who are following the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, then don't expect betterment from any other nations. And if we don't have time for it, then no one in the world will have time for it. It has to come from this ummah. From the ummah of Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
And if we start looking at our lives, it looks like, it seems that we are just living by default. I, I was born, so now I have to do what everyone else is doing in the world. We are just living by default. We are not living by design. We are not designing our life to see what we would like to do. We are not designing our schedules to see what we would like to achieve with this life. It's by default. The whole world is saying, okay, you go to, you wake up in the morning, go to work, at the evening, come back home, do this, watch TV, read the newspaper, sit with your children for half an hour, drink coffee, go to bed. It's everything by default. قَالَ فِرْعَوْنُ مَا أُرِيكُمْ إِلَّا مَا أَرَى Fir'aun at his time said to his people, I only show you what I see. And I show you what you're supposed to do, that's it. And today the same way, we, only, we are only following what we see out there. And we are nothing. We are nothing except what we do. We are, the whole world is nothing but the actions of human beings. And these actions of human beings depend on our thoughts. What do we think? How we think? If our main method of thinking is not correct, if we don't think right, then everything else will come up corrupted. Do we realize that in this part of the world, in North America, this is a fact that has been published that every child, every child, every day, spends three to four hours watching TV. You know what does that mean? At the age of 70, every man, every woman, have spent 10 years of their life in front of the TV. It looks like three to four hours only. But this is the general, this is how the growth of the country is. That by the age of 70, generally every individual had spent 10 years in front of the TV, out of 70 years of his life. And what's happening on that TV? They say that every year, people see 2,000 alcohol-related conversions on the TV. 2,000. Each person sees it every year. 2,000 times. And a teenager, by the time he's in, is 18 and 19, he has seen 200,000 acts of violence on the TV. We are not saying this. The people who are producing it, they are telling us this. They are telling us these facts. That on normal shows, every youth, teenager, by the age of 18, 19, he has seen 200,000 acts of violence over there. 14,000 of them related to sexual, sexual abuse. Now with this, as this person is looking, seeing all of this, we need to remember this fact of our life also, that there are about 60,000 thoughts that run through a person's mind every day. 60,000 thoughts that run through every person's mind every day. 95% of these thoughts are the same as yesterday's. 95% of the thoughts that things and things that you are thinking about today are the same as what you were thinking about yesterday. Where are we getting all of these thoughts from? It's where we spend our time. Whatever we do, that's what we, thought, what we think about. When people are watching all of those things over there, then this is what they think about. And as they think about it, then they start planning for it. And this is what they end up doing. This is why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam created an atmosphere that was pure and clean. 
Because when you hear wrong things, when a person would see the wrong things, then he would do wrong things. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam created the atmosphere. When a child is born, first thing he hears, Adhan, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Then he comes home, and he's in the laps of his mother. وَذْكُرْنَ مَا يُتْلَى فِي بُيُوتِكُنَّ مِنْ آيَاتِ اللَّهِ وَالْحِكْمِ Quran advises, Ummahatul Mu'mineen, and does all the Muslim women that keep on repeating the ayahs of Allah and the words of hikmah that you got from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at your home. The child is growing, he hears the adhan from the minara everywhere, from the masajid. Pure and clean atmosphere. No one is rejected in that society. Everyone is accepted. And there is way for everyone to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a pure and clean atmosphere. Whoever comes into that atmosphere gets clean and pure. People came to Medina Munawwara with the intention of the coming, committing violence in Medina Munawwara. As they come and spend few days over there, they realized that instead of doing that, why don't I become part of this? And there are hundreds of examples of it in the seerah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It was about the 4th century. And this is something recorded in the books of history. Hatib al-Baghdadi rahmatullahi alayhi narrated that in Baghdad, there was a family, husband and wife, and they had a son. The son was only about 4 years old when both the parents died. Now the child is growing up on the streets. And accordingly he's developing those habits. To fulfill his needs, he has to go and steal. Finally, by the time he was 15 years old, he was known to be one of the robbers in Baghdad. And one day he gets caught, he got into the prison, gets punished for it, comes out, and now this became a routine in his life. Some years later, he's caught in one of the robberies where they cut his hand. But unfortunately that did not correct this person, in fact he's getting worse. He comes out, and again he's caught, and they put him in prison for 10 years. This is the child. He was four years old when he became orphan. He was rejected in the society. No one took care of the child. He grew up on the streets. Ten years in the prison, when he came out, now he's supposed to be staying away from those things that made him go through all of this. But... It became part of his nature now. This is all what he's looking for. And he ends up, to fulfill his needs, ends up breaking into one of the houses. But to his surprise, this time he had a totally different experience. As he entered the house, a man approached him, and he said, Son, are you looking for money? And he looks at him, I'm breaking into his house and he's asking me if I'm looking for money. After thinking for a short while, he says, yes. He said, okay, don't worry about it. And he brings a bag full of money, a bag full of food, and he says, son, take this. The man couldn't understand what's happening there. Is he the owner? Or is he a worker over here? Why is he giving me all of this money for? And he knows that I'm breaking into his house. And then he offers him, he says, Son, if this is too heavy for you to carry, I'll help you taking it to your home. And he says, Uncle, I don't have a home. So where do you live, son? 
Oh, I'll just go and live somewhere out in the jungle. Son, how about you stay with me? At this time, he's afraid. He doesn't know who the person is. He says, no. I'll just take what you're giving me and I'm leaving. He picks up the bags as much as he could and he leaves. But now something is tickling him inside. Who this man is? I have to find out more about this person. He goes back and knocks at one of the door, neighbor's doors. Who's this man next door? Who's this old man that lives in this house? They said his name is Junaid al-Baghdadi. Rahmatullahi alayhi. And he had heard his name. He goes back and knocks at that door. The same man opened the door. Junaid rahmatullahi Ali opened the door. Yes, son. Did you change your mind? You want to stay with me? Yes, uncle. I would like to stay with you now. And he stays with him. And later on, if you read the history of Islam, you would see that one of the great scholars of Islam, whose name was Sheikh Ahmed ibn Sabat, this was the same robber that went into and broke into Junaid Baghdadi's home. He became one of the greatest scholars of Islam, Sheikh Ahmed ibn Sabat rahmatullahi alayhi. A change has to come from within the person. The person is willing to change, Allah's doors are always open. We should never think I'm a robber, I'm a thief, I committed this, I have done that. I can never be like this person. I can never be like those people. Allah's rahmah is greater than what we can think. And it's open for all of us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his rahmah on us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of us on this day. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give all of us tawfiq to advance with our deen, to get stronger with our iman, and to get even closer and closer on our daily life to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of us. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa nisa'ir al-muslimina wal-muslimat wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.